Hello and welcome to the Underpaid Gamers Podcast. My name is Tony. I'm with my friend and colleague Justin. Hello! We're reclining, relaxing, acting all cool, shooting some b-ball outside the school. That's uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air's opening words uh, for sure the younger audiences I'm sure that weren't know. alive during the 90s. That's true. Which is anybody younger than 17. Shush. <laughs> we're not old. We're not really old. Anyway, we're talking about some hodgepodge of topics today, including Destiny 2, of course. Uh, PUBG, again. Salt and PUBG. And Pepper. No, just Salt. Okay. Uh, I'll explain it. Tomb Raider and some other things. Yeah, so stay tuned for some news and some fun talk. Theme song! Man, that theme song gets me every time. Right in the ear holes. Right? It's just so good. Literally so good. The Underpaid Gamers official podcast of underpaidgamers.com. You can find us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Music, other podcast services. We're on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at UP Gamers Podcast. Email us at underpaidgamerspodcast at gmail.com. That's it. That's what we got. Is that it? I think so. We never know. I always feel like we miss one thing, but we can never remember what it is. By the way, let's start with the news. What do we got? Sweet, CBS is launching the new Pregnant Star Trek. Pregnant <laughs> uh, Star Trek is coming back, if you haven't heard. Star Trek Discovery. Nerd alert! Uh, September Nerd 20, alert! September 24th, uh, CBS is launching, perhaps even sending, or venturing forth with a new... I was trying to make a fun pun, but it didn't work. Uh, they're starting their new show, and you can get it on <laughs> CBS Access, which is... Their online platform. This is basically... That you pay money for? Yeah. They basically are launching this CBS service with this as their flagship. <gasps> and so did as their enterprise? Yes. Except for it's not the enterprise this time. But it's good. Uh, I know very little about Star Trek. I know. You weren't very happy when I put this in here. Nerd! Yep. But uh, yeah, so if you are into Star Trek, new show's coming out, CBS... Five bucks a month if you do it with ads, and it's ten bucks if you do it without ads. Five so, bucks a month with ads? Yeah. There's no free version. You get a free week. Cable companies are stupid. So, either way, that's what they're doing. We'll see if they find success with it. Um, to me, they should have this be free with ads. but Free with ads, or you pay free, with no yeah, ads. Exactly. I, and I feel like they need to have like a, a broader amount of... Offerings. Content? Like, they have some of the old Star Trek shows and a few of their own shows they've had on TV for a while up on it. But the, the but compared to other things, like Netflix, which has so much content, the the, lo- the amount of content is just so different. And versus HBO, again, like, much more mature online streaming services that are at about the same price. Have you... Can I watch sports with this? CBS Access? Uh, from can I, I watch it's just shows. Football? I don't think so. That's you're dumb. I'm not sure though. CBS. I'm dumb. I'm you're not dumb. I'm just reporting. The CBS <laughs> is dumb. Do you know if they're releasing this one episode per week or is yes. it all? It's one episode a week. Um, they're <gasps> airing, I think they're airing only the first episode on t- actual TV and the rest of it's on CBS Go. This is such a bad idea. Netflix makes money off of binge watching. That's true. It, like 67 percent of their people that watch binge watch like watch one or more episodes or like two or more episodes. Per viewing time. Yep. And because they release them season at a time. HBO doesn't necessarily, with their live shows, Game of Thrones, I guess, and stuff like that. I don't know. This just seems like a bad... CBS All Access, that's what it's called? Or what's it called? Something like that. You know, if I can't watch football on it, and I pay money for this, and I get ads, it just... All last year... When I wanted to watch football, which was very seldomly, but when I did, I would just find a way to watch it and to get it into my eyeballs. Yeah. One way or another. Mm-hmm. Without having a cable provider. Such as going to, like, a restaurant. Correct. And watching it there. Yes. Exactly like that. Yeah. So, anyways, that's CBS Star Trek. They're launching this thing. I think the price point is wrong. I think the whole thing <laughs> is wrong. 
I don't think it's not wrong. because it's Star Trek, although that does add a little bit to it. I mean, I don't know where that's coming from, but what I hate for Star Trek. Well, I think streaming is the future. I just think the prices are wrong how for much, where they're at. How much is Netflix now? Do you know? It's like ten bucks a month. Is, is it like ten bucks? And it's this is five bucks a month. No, it's five or ten. It's five for ads, yeah. ten for free. I mean, ten for no ads, ad free. <laughs> ten. <laughs> ten and it's free. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> yeah, but even so, like Netflix didn't start off at ten dollars. Sort Back of seven. when it was, when there was less stuff on it and Netflix was making less of their shows. Yeah, it was seven dollars, and then they kicked it up not that long ago to ten dollars. Um, man, that's just seems like such. I a mean, if it was five bucks a month for no ads, I think that'd be a good price. Especially with the, from what I understand, the lack of big titles that they have that are new or fresh that they're producing. CBS or yeah, Netflix? CBS. What are you talking about here? CBS. I think CBS should be five starting off. But you get the access to all their other shows? Yeah. You can watch? Yeah. What's on CBS? Any? I haven't had cable for... There's like a Big Brother show that's popular. There's... Literally seven years. I have not had a cable subscription for seven years. Yeah. I don't know what's on TV anymore. When I go to my parents' house and they're watching TV and don't I walk in, it? I'm like, this sucks. I know. That's exactly how I feel. My parents watch TV. Like, I hate everything about this right I'm now. I'm like, why are you putting up with, with commercials, and why are you sticking to the schedule that they make you? Just <laughs> pick the show you want to watch. Be free. And watch the show. Now, I watch TV when I, when I had a couple jobs. I worked in a, in a hotel, and I worked in a couple restaurants, and they had, you know, the sports stuff on. Sure. So I'd watch that all the time. That stuff makes sense. Well, that's ESPN. it's live. Yeah. And it's ESPN and stuff like that. So I know what's going on with those right, channels. I think the news, are, the news is fine, the news too, on cable. The newsers, not to be confused with the newsies. No, that makes sense because that's a lie. I just tell them, like, is Big Bang Theory on CBS or is that on something else? I think it's on CBS. Is it still on air? I have no idea. I don't watch cable. <laughs> what live shows are... I, okay, so I know Big Bang Theory. Yeah. I know they're making a new show called Young Sheldon. Yeah, it's... Which is Sheldon uh, from Big Bang Theory except young a kid. and annoying. Right. More annoying than he is when he's an adult. He's my least favorite... Least favorite character in Big Bang Theory. Everyone always talks about how he's the best. I can't stand it. Hmm. You know, last time I watched Big Bang Theory... Talk to me. I was playing Skyrim for, like, the first time. Oh, wow. I was grinding out. I had Big Bang Theory on one TV. I had my Skyrim on the other. 2013. I'm not surprised. That's awesome. I like dating things by video game releases. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can tell what the uh, what you consider the important events of your life are. <laughs> when I was getting a PS2, I asked for Jack 2 for Christmas, nice. and I was not allowed to get it because Jack is holding a big gun on the front. And his teeth. And my grandmother thought that was too inappropriate. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you're right. I got it anyway, nice. somehow. I either convinced my parents or I mm-hmm. saved money and went out and bought it. I don't know. I've yet to kill anybody, so it turns out it didn't affect me that much. There you go. That's good. Not that we know of. Yep. So, <laughs> moving on. All right, what's this Code Vein? Code Vein is a video game that is coming out that is basically Dark Souls, but with vampires and it's anime. It's mm-hmm. like, so. I, Who's making it? It's like kind of cell shaded. Um, I had the information up, and now it's not. Bandai Namco. Oh, yeah. They're making, basically... To me, the the first trailer that I watched of this game, it just looks... I mean, it's Dark Souls, but just anime. And the character's a little bit more ridiculous, uh, but it's very, like, dark feeling. um, And just, like, the brutal combat of Dark Souls is what it looks like and feels like. Ever since I dove way too deep into Persona 5, I have been all about these kind of games. Yeah, you're going to probably get this one. Probably not. You should. When does it come out? Get Dark Souls. Uh, it is coming out. It's far from you. Uh, is there a release date on this? There, I, it's uh, out right now. Coming out in 2018. On PlayStation. Oh. 2018. For $60 price point. Yep. Only on PS4? Nope. Or Xbox One and PC. Okay. I. I see you. You know what else is coming out in 2018? A whole bunch of stuff. I don't have time for this code vein. Yeah, do you want to know what something else that's coming out in 2018 is? Spider-Man. Shadow of Colossus HD remake. They dropped a trailer this week. What up? 
They announced that at E3. I know they didn't. Okay, just making sure. But they dropped a trailer this week. What's the trailer about? It's it's just the HD version of the trailer from a long time ago. Have you watched... Have Did you play that when oh. you were younger? Yeah, I did. I grew up, and it was one of the games that we had on our PS2. Did you beat it? Yeah. I didn't beat it. My... Yeah, I played through it, and I absolutely fell in love with the game. As most people do. I absolutely like the, the simplistic style, style of the whole thing. What about these... Was great. Okay, this is what I remember from Shadow of the Colossus. Everybody, of course, remembers the varied and different boss fights. You always have to do something different to defeat these bosses. Yes. What I feel like most people forget was the long travel time from point A to point B to get to those boss fights. Mm -hmm. And the only direction, you didn't have a mini-map or anything, it was just you put your sword up in the air and the the light light shone where you're supposed to go. Yep. And that can be very confusing and very difficult. Mm -hmm. Do you think a game like that, if it came out for the first time in 2018, would it stand or do you think it would just be brushed away? That's a good question. There's no chances for microtransactions. Uh, I as far as I can tell, I think it would still be received well, but I don't think. I feel like the. the I think it'd be fine as is. I think it'd be fine as is. With I, just HD graphics. Man, I don't know. I think. Shadow of the Colossus came out, at a time where there wasn't just overload with video games. So it could really shine based on how strong its mechanics were, were um, the bo- the varied boss fights, how difficult this can be, and mm-hmm. how you always have to do something differently. There wasn't, re- there's no dialogue. There's hardly a story to it. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, you just go out and you fight these things. You don't really know why you're doing it, other than this small little cutscene at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it came out in such a time where there wasn't a lot of competition for something like that. I know. It- what would you consider competition for this game? What, I mean, the original, like, now or back then? Well, I, I mean, I think we're talking about today, right? Like, if this came out today... If this came out today, there's... Yes. Okay, if this came out today, I think it would be kind of put into that small corner where everyone just kind of puts indie games. Where, like, okay, sure. this is really good, but this is an indie game. Yeah. It's from Studio Japan, who also made... Well, at this point, it would be... Who made The Last Guardian, so I don't know if I'm going to trust this. Because that would be flipped, wouldn't it? They made The Last Guardian that took 10 years for them to come out. Oh, and they're making Shadow of Colossus. I don't know if I'm going to like this one. Mm. As opposed to, they made a Shadow of Colossus. I can't wait for The Last Guardian to come out. Right. So that's, I mean, that changes the, that changes the whole spectrum of the gaming industry. This game, Shadow of the Colossus. It definitely had an effect. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, if it came out next year for the first time, we've never seen it before, I think it would get swept under the rug. I don't, I think there is... If the industry had grown in the way that it is now, so like, mm. if it didn't have an impact, because now you have games that have all very different boss fights. You have Neo that came out. You have, mm-hmm. um, which this game I feel like inspired was a lot the of forerunner uh-huh. of all these games. So, right. I mean, I don't know what that genre would look like without Shadow of the Shadow Colossus. Of the Colossus. Mm-hmm. Like, would they have still made those other games? Maybe, probably not. <laughs> but what I'm saying is if it came out in 2018 in the same landscape that we have right now where all these games are still out we have Neo we have mm-hmm. um, there's another game that came out I just can't think about it anymore um, another kind of adventure game like that um, I think this one would not be rated nearly as highly because yeah I mean definitely I mean definitely the praise that it gets is has to be understood in its context. So from its time period, it's from its time period, like there was really nothing else like it. And if we assume that all the those games that followed it had come out, then yeah, probably I can see your point. I mean, it even could be completely open world games. Yeah, like there weren't there weren't that many open world games on the PS2 era. I mean, there was uh, Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto Three was kind of the first one to do it huge. Yeah, Shadow of the Colossus. It's an open world, but there's nothing to do in that world other, other than, than boss fights. Travel and boss fights. Sure. So, I mean, okay, so here's an example. We, uh, we've been playing a lot of Destiny 2 recently, and we'll get more into this discussion. Uh, maybe this will be just a, a great segue to yeah. our next conversation. I don't know. Sure. I don't, but let's go for we're, it. we're both on the Destiny Reddit. We're looking through that all the time, and people complaining left and right that there's not enough content, there's not enough stuff to do in Destiny, mm-hmm. which has so many things you can do by yourself, so many things you can do with friends, mm-hmm. you can do PvP, PvE, all those other things. Sure. If you compare that to Shadow of the Colossus, which is just 
travel and boss fights. Mm-hmm. Like that game wouldn't stand on its two le- on its legs if it well, came out. I don't think it's fair to compare Destiny Two to Shadows of the Colossus. Well, if we're they're completely different genres, and you do, like Destiny Two is an MMO FPS RPG, maybe maybe RPG. I mean the customization, the loot grinding game. That game, well, you buy Destiny Two and you know like, that game's a that's a that's a time sink. I mean, I think it'd be fair to. to How much is Shadow of the Colossus retailing at? Sixty dollars. I mean, $30, when, it, when it came out, I think it was. Well, when what, it came out, I'm sure it was 40, full. It was a full price. Right full price. Yeah, game. I don't know what uh, I I don't know what the price is for. This is also the second time they've remastered it. That's true. But I'm saying if this if Shadow of the Colossus came out in 2018, mm-hmm. it it would just die. I there is there is nothing that would hold. I think there's nothing that would hold up. I'm not saying that game is rev- that game is revolutionary. That game made gaming what it is today because it came out at the time period when it was supposed to come out. Mm-hmm. W- when it could come out, when it had that impact. You don't think it had any success? If it came out for the first time ever? Yeah, right now. I do not think so. Not any more than just a standard like indie title. Of things like that. You don't think um, it would stand out as a good indie title? I'm sure it would, but... Because, like, like I, I mean, I, it would I come, guess our, de- our definition of success is different. Because, I, I mean, I still feel like it would sell lots of copies. It would be in the indie category as, like, one of the best. Like, Brothers was a big deal, right? And there's some other indie-ish games that were a big deal. I feel like it would Yeah, but how much deal. of that was just because they were free on PSN Network? If this was free on PSN Network, of course it would get larger. But if it was just if it just retailed, like so, I mean, let's so say are there out, indie games that are successful that aren't on PlayStation Plus? Indie games, yeah, that were successful without being on PlayStation Plus. <sighs> Binding of Isaac, which eventually came to PS Plus, eventually did, but it was successful way before it got on the PlayStation. Yeah, Plus. It wasn't it on PS PC first? It was on PC, and then and that's and what made it it's still coming out. Like it came out on Switch. Oh right, so like. That's a huge indie game. That's, like, big. And maybe, I don't even know if we're using indie as an appropriate term for what it's supposed to be. I don't know what else. Is Studio I would Japan. define... Is Studio Japan an indie publisher? I don't know. They te- sound bigger than... They're technically a first-party publisher. That's, for something. that's kind of what I, I was like. I don't know if we can call it indie, but, I think, but it has the feel of, like, an... But would Shadow of the Colossus come out and be comparable to other first-party games for Sony? First-party? Uncharted. Exactly how Last it is. of Us. Neo, probably not. Uh, Bloodborne. Bloodborne. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean I, that that might be fair. I don't think. Yeah, I guess. I guess the position. I mean, it would definitely be different than it was in the past. I think my what I think, and I mean, how can we verify this? We'll never know because it didn't happen that way. But I think it would still find success in its niche. I don't... I mean, obviously, it wouldn't be as revolutionary as it was, right? The timing of it matters, and it was super successful in the time because of its newness, its new approach, its new mechanics. Mm -hmm. The things about it that made it stand out at the beginning aren't going to be there the second time, but I still think it would would do well within its niche. It wouldn't do as well, for sure. Better or worse than Knack? Gross. Get neck out of here. I, w- I would say worse than neck. Now, the game itself is better, but they... I mean, it depends on how they marketed it. If they market it like they are right now, which is a trailer here and there and kind of announcing some things at E3, like, they put a lot of effort into neck when it first came out. I don't remember. I never got into that game. <laughs> I remember it was one of the first titles, and I refused to buy it when I first got my PS4, so that looked stupid. I played it with my wife. I know you did. We, it was, it was alright. I enjoyed it, but I was player one. And <laughs> player two is very restricted to what player one can do. So, like, if player one goes somewhere, mm-hmm. player two doesn't have a choice they have to follow. So she really hated that. But that was kind of fun. I mean, we yeah. I bought it so we could play together. Sure. I'm trying to find what the other game is. I know Neo... Wikipedia isn't helping. I quit. I can't find it. All right. There's a lot of stuff. Let's move on. Wait. Tell, tell us what you think. Wait, I, <laughs> listeners. Fine. Yes. Fine. 
I mean, I don't know how much more we can talk about. Like, all we can do is do say impressions. Like, it didn't come out, so we don't know. I mean, I I guess we'll wait. But I think if it sells, I mean, obviously it's a remake. So it's banking on the nostalgia factor. Right. And I think it'll find success. Like, there are tons of, like, think of, like... Are you going to buy it? I was thinking about it. I didn't get the PS3 remake. And when I saw it, it stirred something within me. When you... Assuming you buy it, yeah. do you think you're going to beat it? It depends on the other games that are going out. <laughs> Coming out, which is like everything. So I have three games in my drawer at home that I haven't played yet, that I'm waiting to play, that I need to. Which ones are those? Uh, Nocturnal... No, Natural Dr- Doctrine. Uh, Persona 5. Yeah. And... Heavy Rain? No. <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn. That's true. <laughs> which is still been beaten. So you're a lost soul. Is all I can say. I am a lost soul. Either way, let us know what you think, guys. Hey, guys. I just if it sells, it'll either be one because people buy it for nostalgia, sure, or two, like that's a big drop. For someone's sure. little brother was like, I never got to play this, but my brother talks about it all the time. It was great. Mm-hmm. I mean, how often do we talk about Shadow of the Colossus anymore? It always comes up on, like, best PS2 games. It's always, like, in the top five. Oh, yeah. Which it is very deserving of. That game was incredible. Mm-hmm. Dragon Quest VIII is up there. <laughs> get, get out of here. Let's move on, Tony. Move on. Uh, Rockstar, speaking of open world games, i.e. Grand Theft Auto that came out and changed the world on PlayStation and PlayStation 2, and I mentioned that when we were talking totally about missed that Shadow of the Colossus. Thing. Yeah. Rockstar made an announcement. They made a Twitter announcement. Uh, that said that they're going to make an announcement. Announcements for announcements. That's right. My favorite. Thursday, September 28th at 11 a.m., they are announcing something with Red Dead Redemption. Um, interesting. Uh, I assume it'll probably be an, another trailer? Probably. A different trailer m- with a release date? Maybe. Do you think... Okay, it's September. Mm-hmm. Now, they, I, I guess, never mind. They already announced that they're going to wait until 2018. Right. So they're not going to pull a Fallout and be like, this is coming out in November. Which game, here's a question for you. Okay. Which game do you think would sell more if, it, if Call of Duty came out November 3rd and Red Dead came out November 3rd? Do you think Rockstar has any footing in that competition? Do you think Rockstar is a big enough company where they can get in there and say, we are going to take some players from Call of Duty? Or do you think Activision and Call of Duty have such a hold on the market that anyone else around the area just needs to step away? I think history has shown that you can't compete with Call of Duty. Or Madden. Or Madden. Like, you, you cannot, like... Because there is such a huge segment of the gamer populace and the populace as a whole who the only gaming that they know is Call of Duty. Like, there are people who they, they exclusively play Madden and Call of Duty, and those are the games that they play, and that's it. They're mm-hmm. not intense gamers. They look forward to those games alone. They don't care about anything else that comes out. Also, you're going to have the people who say Red Dead Redemption 2 is an RPG... If I wait, it's not going to affect me. However, to get Call of Duty when it first starts out, that's when it has the most hype, the most players. And so I'm going to do that first because it's so multiplayer heavy and play Red Dead Redemption 2 later. Uh. I.e., this is the stance that I take a lot of times when it comes to RPGs, which you hated when Uncharted 4 came out. (laughs) Because I said, when Uncharted 4 came out, I said, this is an RPG. It's not going to lose value if I wait until... February, which you hated because you beat it and you want to talk about it, and I would not play it. Yeah, the value of the podcast discussions. Yeah. So, you think... Those are my two arguments to why Call of Duty... I still think... Like, you cannot dethrone Call of Duty. Like, is it possible? They put out crap games sometimes, and people still buy the crap out of them. They make record profits. What game company or what game do you think could go toe-to-toe the best with Call of Duty? Uh, Halo in its prime could have, but... Halo's past is prime, so... What, games these days. Do you think Destiny 2? If Destiny 2 came out in November? If Destiny 2 and Call of Duty came out at the same time, I would have bought Call of Duty. I would not have bought Destiny 2. I know you would have. I would have bought Destiny 2. I'm considering canceling my, my pre-order for Call of Duty 2 just because like, I'm probably going to be playing Destiny at this point. Really? I mean, it's, it's pretty early to call that, but... 
It's been two weeks. <laughs> I know. It's pretty early to call that. And their next expansion's that. in December. Yeah. So you have to go three months with nothing else to do other than what, whatever they decide. Pretty to much do. what you've already done, just three yeah. times over, two times over, three times over. So, is anything out there could fight against Call of Duty in the November time slot? Last year, they last year Activision tried or EA tried to with Titanfall mm-hmm. and Battlefield One came out oh, right in the same time as Call of Duty. Yeah. They try to take some of that market share from them. Yeah. Against Infinite Warfare, which already was the most disliked Call of Duty video oh, trailer right. of all time, right? right? So I don't know if if they intentionally tried to pick that battle with a Call of Duty that wasn't going to sell very well comparatively, yeah. or if they're just like, we're doing this no matter what. Yeah. And it just so happened that Call of Duty sucked that year. That's true. Well, this World War II, I think it's going to... I mean, yeah, I... I just can't conceive how Call of Duty could get dethroned at this point. It's like ingrained in the timeline of the game. Or like Call of Duty should have to suck real bad for a long time for like two or three years straight to really break down the community around it. For instance, like Assassin's Creed had a huge community, and then it, it really got broken down as multiple games came out with just terrible bugs when they released, and. They lost a lot of people. I mean, you're saying... Like, that would have to happen in Call of Duty. There would have to be the worst Call of Duty to date. Because there's been what we consider bad Call of Duty. That do really well. That still do really well. Yeah, And exactly. even even if we call them bad, they're not that bad of games. Right. They're not bad in, in terms of, like, there are game-crashing bugs. Yeah. And, like, ter- like, the graphics are just blowing up everywhere. And there's, like, so many... You know, you've seen bad games before. Like, none of those types of errors. It's always, like... It's like, oh man, all, look at all these jet moves. I hate this. Yeah. Like, oh, wall riding? Way to copy Titanfall. Like, like, <laughs> I hated the story, man. Okay, sweet. Those are very mild complaints compared to what could happen. So what do you think Red Dead 2 is going to be like? Because it sounds to me, mm-hmm. based on what you just said... I mean, what, we haven't discussed what you think. Do you, do you agree with me about Call of Duty beating out Red Dead if it came out on the same day? See, that's so hard. Um, Because they're not like. I think Rockstar is a rock star in the gaming industry, you know? (laughs) Like, Grand Theft Auto has been amazing for them. That's true. And has been game of the year. Although, like, they have have a pretty big following. So, like, it is a hard decision. I still still think Call of Duty, but I don't know. Red Dead Redemption came out seven years ago, 2010, in case you didn't know. Which means seven years old is the average Call of Duty player. Jokingly. But also maybe figured. Maybe realistically. <laughs> means the average Call of Duty player has never played Red Dead Redemption, the first one. So they're coming out with a sequel for the people that are older, like us, that have played it. And, I mean, I don't think Red Dead Redemption would be able to dethrone Call of Duty. GTA 6? Maybe. I think when GTA 5 came out, it was the best-selling game of that year. Mm-hmm. Um, and GTA 5 is still on like the top UK charts every single week, every single month for sales for whatever reason. I think Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to sell a lot, but I don't think... I think GTA 6 would have a better chance than Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. Just because GTA 5 is so so new still. Right. I mean, and that's their, three that's their flagship game, GTA. You mean not L.A. Noir? Definitely not that. Definitely not that. Manhunt? So, it seems... I think Red Dead Redemption is going to be more like Grand Theft Auto V than it will be like Red Dead Redemption, the first one. You think so? I think there's going to be more social multiplayer aspects to this than Mm -hmm. there were in GTA V and less RPG elements. Now, I know GTA V had the whole campaign, the whole career mode, which I, was, I thought I had a lot of fun doing. That was a lot of fun to do. You, sure, it's pretty much, from what I remember, it's all solo. You might have been able to co-op with people, but I just never did. Uh, Red Dead Redemption already, on their trailer, showed that it's you and six other outlaws. So they're already showing you it's going to be some posse, if I can use old western t- terms. Yeah, sure. Um... Right, gallivanting around. Yeah, and that makes sense too, because they've had so much success with the social aspect to GTA Five. So why not 
Right. It just seems when you were explaining it and maybe you just didn't go more into deep depth, you're like, I don't want to get this. I don't have to get this right now because it's not going to affect the, right. the gameplay later. That's when true. I feel like this could have a big effect and you might have to get on it. It might have a, yeah, it might have a bigger effect, but I still think multiplayer in Call of Duty is bigger than multiplayer would be in, like, as what the game is, right? Like, the campaign or the single player in Call of Duty is usually, like, like, to me, my rule is I beat the campaign before I do multiplayer. Mm -hmm. But there are some people who literally just never even play the campaign. Mm -hmm. They just go straight into multiplayer. Like, to me, Call of Duty is, like, 80-20, maybe 90-10, Multiplayer is ninety percent, campaign is ten percent. Mm-hmm. Especially the time you put into it, it's like less than ten. It's like one percent yeah. of the time you put in that game. Whereas Red Dead Redemption Two, my prediction, I'm probably going to put just as much time into the campaign as multiplayer, if not more, because I'm guessing the campaign is going to be really awesome and it's going to be like stretched out. And multiplayer, I'll probably play for some, but I, I don't know if I'll get into it as much. Though I haven't played GTA Five, so don't really know about that social part of it. So. I played GTA I don't Online love for it, a while, but GTA, GTA Online, when GTA first released, um, GTA Online, I think it was a couple days or maybe in a week or so after GTA came out, mm-hmm. where they released the online portion. So I had a good amount of time to do the camp, the career, and do all that, and that was fun. Um, and then it came out, and it was like kind of the first time. I mean, there was a multiplayer to Red Dead Redemption, the first one, but by the time I got it and was had a stable internet connection, it was like. 2013 mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like three years after nobody was on anymore so gta online was really in beta when it first came out yeah and they've changed so much about it now they've kind of fine-tuned they know exactly what they're doing mm-hmm. so i expect them to hit it really hard and really strong with red dead redemption online from the start yeah yeah and i don't so i guess we go back to what do you think what do you think this announcement is going to be on thursday hmm could it be the multiplayer aspect that you're talking about? Is that what you're getting at? Yeah. Do you think it's going to be multiplayer? Do you think it's going to be more story trailer? Do you think it's going to be a release date? What I think you... it'll be a release date. That's what I think. Because since they announced earlier in the year that it's not going to be out until 2018, I think they're going to be more specific. Okay. Quarter, quarter three. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine? That's a whole year. Yep. Because people thought it was coming out in 2017. Yeah, I know. We still have a friend who doesn't believe that it's coming out in 2018. <laughs> yeah, well. Even though we have reported it on the podcast that he claims to listen to. Lies! Tim. Mm-hmm. What else do we got? Uh, Player Unknowns, Battlegrounds. PUBG! Blue Note, the producer behind it. He's throwing some shade around. Blue Note is a company. Or maybe rubbing some salt to my earlier reference. I don't remember it. Okay. It's all about salt and pepper. At the intro. It's all about salt and pepper. <laughs> um, Fortnite is a free-to-play game on PC, definitely. Maybe also PS4. It's like a zombie game, from what I know. Yeah. You choose a you choose a class or something, you go out with your buddies, and you build a fortress, and you try to last a fortnight, mm-hmm. two weeks, I guess, against zombie hordes, blah, 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 blah. Kind of like Minecraft with zombies, but it's cel-shaded, cartoony. Mm-hmm. Yeah, third-person shooter. Third-person. Um... I've heard good things about it. I've never played it. Never really cared to play it. They announced that they are doing a battle royale, which is eerily similar to Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. As in, it literally looks the exact same, except for way too way more cartoony. Yeah, it's essentially the exact same thing with a couple added features. Right, which is expected. We're going to see a lot more games with these kind of features. GTA would be a great one that you could do exactly PUBG with, mm-hmm. of course, if they don't already have it. Mm-hmm. Um, the quote unquote controversy comes from Blue Note who issued a statement that said that they are really unhappy with Fortnite for stealing their ideas and they are going to pursue legal action which I think is <sighs> stupid insane mm-hmm. I assume you uh, I mean what? games taking each other's multiplayer versions? what? <laughs> That's never happened before. I mean, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds wasn't Sarcasm. even the first one to do that. To do Battle Royale. And, right. and it's not even a game that's released yet. It's still in early access. Right. Can yeah. You, can you patent something that's not officially... Can you patent an idea? I don't know. I don't know. I know you can patent products. Yeah, but can you do ideas? Copyright. I guess, is it technically... For, I don't know. But uh, Battlegrounds came from H1Z1, which came from Arma 3, which came from Gary's Mod. 
Right. Right? It's a long So this system. has been around. Right. Fortnite, I mean, okay, so Fortnite's Battlegrounds, or Battle Royale, whichever one it's called, mm-hmm. um, it's very different from the original Fortnite game. It's, yeah. Fortnite is PvE, it's multiplayer PvE. This is solely PvP, and it doesn't really have any tie into the PvE concepts at all. Mm-hmm. Which I think maybe be one of the reasons why Blue Note's so upset about it. Yeah. They're like, I don't want to, like, this is absurd, you're stealing our content, but that's just, that's, of course that's going to happen. Every, from now until like the next five years, you're going to see games like this. You're going to have, po- that have Battle Royale in it. Yeah. It's popular right now. Mm-hmm. Like, surprise, when shooters first came out and there was multiplayer, everyone played Slayer, right? Or like <laughs> Team Deathmatch. It's all the same. It's the exact same type. And all the games do it. Is the first game going to sue everybody else because of it? No. I think, I didn't, it's of course good. this is going to happen. I'm so surprised that Blue Note is trying to bring them down. Uh, the IGN article is just like, nobody would have known about Fortnite's paddle, Battle Royale. Unless, but now everyone But knows. now everybody does. Because PUBG is so big. Because they made a big deal about it. Mm-hmm. And it looks bad on PUBG. Yeah. To care about this. Oh, so also, Fortnite is free, whereas PUBG is $30. Yeah. And it's not even out yet. It's not even out on PC. Not official. Okay, so you own it on PC. I do. When it eventually comes to PS4, are you going to rebuy it? No. Really? No. What if your friends have it on PS4? I don't care. I don't care about my friends. <laughs> don't take that out of context. I'm kidding. I was sarcastic. I'm not going to get on PS4, though. I don't play it enough right now to, to say... It's worth 30 bucks. Why don't you play it right now? Because I have Destiny 2 to play. <laughs> and I'm playing other PC games. I'm right. playing PC. You don't think having friends to play it with would change your... Uh, it is the number one factor that would try and persuade me to do it. But I don't know if I want to spend $60 on it. I don't, like, I don't know if I want to rebuy it if I already have it. Right. What I don't understand is why I want to do cross console play like ps4 and pc in the same might as well that'd be awful i know but it'd be so good you you know you understand why they don't yeah, do that because i would be on pc and i would be superior in all ways i've seen you play yeah. not against ps4 players though <laughs> with controllers yeah i'm a ps4 player and i played with a mouse and keyboard for the first time on this game and you hated it no i liked it oh i thought you hated it that's all right oh okay it's different i can only do it for so long i don't have those muscle memory it's hard for me to hit the Q, the Q, and the control, and the alt. Mm-hmm. It's really, they're... The WASD. Keywords are weird. Yeah. What else are we talking about? We don't have much... Uh, Tomb Raider? Yeah, Tomb Raider. And then we'll finish off, as per usual, with Destiny 2. With our Destiny update. Where is Destiny 2 in streaming? We can look that up. Probably number three. You're guessing Destiny 2 is going to be number three. It's a Friday night. Trials of the Nine came out. The raid has not been reset yet. I'm saying... Destiny 2, not top 10. Okay. Higher than 10. You're saying top 3? I'm saying top 3. Ah! 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're both wrong. It's the 10th. It's the 5th. Above Overwatch, I was, behind Hearthstone. I was closer. Above that. Dota 2. Look at that. Hey, yo. I don't see Dota 2 up there that often. Let's see where Destiny 1 is, for old time's sake. Where Where do you guess? Uh, 40th. I don't know. I don't even know if it'll be on the list. I'll look it up on my phone because it actually has numbers of okay. where they rank. Okay. Tell me about this uh, this Tomb Raider business. Yeah, so Tomb Raider, we just watched a trailer for this new movie coming out, Tomb Raider. And it's like a new reboot of the Tomb Raider series. And it is produced in part by Square Enix because we saw that flash up on the screen with all the other producers. Yep. And as we watched the trailer, it looked eerily familiar. <laughs> as in, it's almost the exact same, or at least lots of incredibly similar moments to the Tomb Raider game that came out on PS3, then re released on PS4. It is like so similar. Running around with a bow, using a little pickaxe to climb things. It's like so similar. We were having like deja vu moments. There's like. Literal scenes from the game that came out in 2013 that were in the trailer. Yeah. Like, the boat breaks in half and she jumps out of it. Like, she washes up on shore and gets hit with a gun. Mm. Like, she fl- she falls into the, the cockpit of a plane and lands on the glass. And then 
This one it looked this like it one, broke away, but yeah. it's like this is this, this is basically game. the game <laughs> in a movie. So we are a little bit surprised by that. But I also really like the Laura Croft that they made in the game, so maybe I would like it in a movie. The Tomb Raider games mark? are incredible. They're great. Like we okay, so we watched the trailer. After we watched the movie trailer, we went back and watched the game trailer. And it looked a lot worse than it, I remember. It looked very, very bad. And that was the upscaled one for the PS4. That was not even the we PS3 were, one. We were a little disappointed. Like, holy crap, this is not looking good. This is not great. But the game not itself pretty. is very solid. Oh yeah. And Rise of the Tomb Raider that came out originally on Xbox One and then came out full edition on PS4 was also is also very, very good. I have not quite beaten it yet. I hear it's very long, which is why I haven't gotten back to it. You know when you hear that the games are really long and you're just like, I just don't, I just can't. Mm-hmm. Like you're really into it and then you're like, there's still 30 hours left? Can't do it. Also, I'm the one that takes forever to play games. It took me over 60 hours to beat Horizon. Yeah, because you, you're like, you're basically a completionist when it comes to a lot of those things. And you were playing that game when you're on your Platinum Trophy binge, weren't you? Horizon? Yeah. You pretty much get Horizon's Platinum for just being in the game. But what happened was... Well, the way you beat the game, yeah. You did, like, everything. (laughs) There's not that much... Remember, like, the Hunter or the Challenges guys? Yeah. I went through, like, the first 25 hours and didn't even know... I hadn't done anything with them. I totally skipped them because I was like, I don't want to do this. (laughs) I bet there's a trophy involved in that. Yeah, there's only, like, five of them, though. Five like locations, maybe yeah. six. And each one had three. I don't know. What happened was in Horizon, mm-hmm. I did all the stuff and got max level before I was halfway through the campaign. And you were like, man, this is so easy. Like, this is too easy. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about that. We have. Anything else we want to mention about Tomb Raider other than it's very familiar and it's going to be the video game? I mean, I'll probably go still go see it. I, okay, so I am looking. At number two fifteen on Twitch, and I still haven't seen Destiny. Yeah, it's not Destiny even there. There. It's all it, it gone. People aren't streaming this at all. I don't know why that would be. The whole community's moved over to two. Oh, Tomb Raider two, the original Tomb Raider two. I mean, nice. The original Tomb Raider sequel. Yeah. Number two thirty three on oh, Twitch. There you go. With one hundred and eleven viewers. Nice. So I don't know where Destiny two is. Destiny one is there. I found it. Two forty seven. How many people are streaming or watching? 80 viewers. Nice. Just above... This is weird. Just above Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which is just above <laughs> Uncharted 4. Nice. I would expect Uncharted... I don't know. Well, it's like, that's old news now. I guess it is. Neo's right there. The Walking Dead. Batman Arkham Knight. Brawlhalla. Final Fantasy 6? 6. VI. VI. Mm-hmm. Metro Last Light. That's a good game. Horizon Zero Dawn, all the way down here. 266. Destiny's still beating it out. Yep. But Horizon doesn't have any multiplayer. So what That's is, true. What is why, why, why are people still playing the game? Probably because they're like me and they didn't be able to. Pokemon Emerald. Have we talked enough about what's on Twitch? I think so. Lastly, Destiny 2 update. Update? Well, we're updating the people. About our Destiny 2 about experience. About Destiny 2 so far. Okay, so, I'll let them have it. Uh, yeah. I'm at, le- at light level, power level 291. On your warlock? On my warlock. I'm, I started the titan. It's like level 12 or 13, I think. Maybe 10. I don't remember. I don't really pay attention to the levels. I'm just like playing through it, and I know I'm in double digits now. Yeah, but you to do the campaign, you need to be a light le- at specific levels to I haven't been progressing. limited yet, because I've I, I been doing a side step too. So. I created a hunter, and I got limited... I had to do all this other stuff. And then before I did the last couple missions, I'm like, I'm just going to get to level 20. Because I was at level 19. Mm-hmm. Once I got to level 20, I still had all my rare gear. I was like, light level 150. I'm like, this sucks. Yeah. Everything's super hard. So I switched over a whole bunch of stuff for my warlock, all the weapons, which is at light level 291. Sure. And immediately I put three guns on my hunter. Yeah. Raised them up to 250. Immediately. Oh. So now everything's a piece of cake yeah. in the campaign. Are you still are you still gonna finish the campaign? Yeah. Oh, isn't there a trophy for it, right? No, uh, it's getting all the subclasses. No, it's getting all the subclasses, which I have. Uh, the reason so I even postponed doing some things mm-hmm. on the campaign because they reward you with legendary gear. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well I'm just gonna wait till I get to as high light level as I can with the hunter and then get all those free get ingrams version, right. and get good good versions out of them. Yeah. Um, cause like the strike playlist, like you have to do two strikes for Zavala in like the middle of the campaign. And he rewards you with a legendary Ingram. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, I can get that when I'm at light level 150 and that can suck. 
or I can get it when right. I after I beat the campaign, get all this other stuff. Sure. So that's what I'm doing. I mean, you're you're definitely armor limited by having different classes, but the weapons can yeah. make a big difference. So. so that's what I would recommend. Almost recommend going through and getting to level 20 as fast as you can without doing any of the story missions. And then going through and doing all the story missions and killing all the all the mobs and all this other stuff and having them drop legendary Ingrams and then you'll level up yourself that way. Yeah. Because there's, I mean, there's a lot of people to fight. Sure. And it'll be a piece of cake if you're above 200. Yeah. Definitely. But and it, you can access post game stuff. Well, that's true. some of it. So yeah, it was pretty. It's pretty good. Yeah. So Destiny is coming out with like a new, rolling out a new update on what was it, the 28th, I think. 20th is Thursday. The 20th. It's Tuesday. Next 26th. 26th. Is that is it? Oh yeah, so it's Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, and they're reintroducing factions into the game. Factions. Uh, factions in Destiny One, at least when I played. The Future Vanilla. or Cult. Uh, Dead, Dead Orbit. Orbit. New Monarchy. New Monarchy. Uh, they had. Your, they like, could have. Do you think they should have brought back the same three, or do you think they could have just made new ones? Uh, I mean, it depends how much lore they gave out for those three. I didn't feel like they gave out any lore for those three. But I also didn't read the Grimoire cards. Um, I think they should be true to the Destiny universe. And okay. If they existed, then they should exist now. So you're saying if they're like timeless in the Destiny universe, it makes sense for them to be back? Like if they've been around for a while, I don't know if they have been. I didn't feel like they played a major role in the game besides something to, you can get stuff from. I like, feel you. I feel you. Um, I didn't really like how they did rap in that game with with factions, and I thought they were pretty insignificant to the, basically anything that I did. But. On the flip side, this time, I feel like they're going to be a lot more approachable the way that they're doing it. Uh, essentially, you pick a faction, and your character is bound to that faction, and you can't change. Your other characters on your account can be the other ones. Um, but they all have their own exclusive gear. And over the course of uh, the week, you can gather resources for them. And I'm guessing it'll be like the token system that already exists with all the other vendors. Um, and you can get rep, get ingrams from that. But they're also introducing... A comp- it's like a competition between the factions for how much resources that you gather, I believe, is what it said. Um, and with that, I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant to decide on which faction I want to be yet. I think the... So the end of the competition, the winner, the winner, the winner faction gets, gets, gets like a special prize well, that yeah. is so discounted. It's like... It's a weapon... That's to a be, thousand glimmer. To be specific, yeah, they're all the factions have different weapons. So like, Dead Orbit has a scout rifle. Uh, Future War Cult, I think, has a fusion rifle, has a fusion rifle or a pulse or rifle, pulse or something. Rifle. And yeah. New Monarchy has a sidearm. Oddly enough, yeah, um, I'm not picking that one. And if you, if you're in the the faction that wins that contest, you can buy that weapon for one thousand glimmer. If you're not in that faction and you want to buy that weapon, you still can mm-hmm. for 50,000 Glimmer. Which is half of your max. More than half of max, technically. By like a little by bit. By half. By like point by half gold. <laughs> like, uh, but it seems the easiest way to work around that is have three characters and have one in each different faction and then right. just log on with that character to right, get that weapon. to get the reward. And it's like, at least at first, everyone's going to be joining these factions and I'm just going to wait and see which one has the most people and then join that one. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Like, why not? So they always win. See, I don't know how long the contest is. Is it a weekly contest? I think it's a week. Or, if it, okay, so if it's a week, do the weapons change every week then? I think so. Okay. But I don't know so. Or but is I it think a so. seasonal contest? That's a good question. I think it was weekly is what it said. But I don't know if the weapons changed because it did not say anything about that. I don't know. I just feel like everyone's going to pick Dead Orbit and Future War, and no one's going to pick New Monarchy. Because the stupid sidearm? Because the stupid sidearm. Like, why, why would you do that? Like, some of the New Monarchy stuff, like, armor looks cool, I think. Yeah. But a sidearm? Like, really? Maybe I'm underestimating them, but every time I've used them, I've been very underwhelmed. Like, they're not good for PvE. No. They're good for PvP when you need to switch really quick and finish off a kill? Yeah. But most of the people I talk to only play PvE, or prefer to play PvE. Yeah, like me. Which really just breaks my heart. Look, you just gotta catch me early in the week when I'm, when I'm grinding that uh, crucible. Join the underpaid, underpaid Gamers clan on Destiny 2. Yeah. It's called Underpaid Gamers. Open membership. We'll let you in. We're you already at rank 2, baby. That's right. Don't be a jerk, and we'll keep you. We love you. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Well, any other... Any other thoughts? I have nothing else. I mean, I, I'm, I'm still in love with Destiny 2. 
I'm still in love with it. We'll see how long it lasts. This infatuation. I don't know. Well, knowing you and the way you play games, probably uh, two more. I'm weeks. surprised you beat the campaign. Uh, that's not fair. That's not fair at all. It's pretty fair. Disagree. More pauses. Yep. That's all we have. Thanks for listening, guys. We're gonna go raid. Something like that. Destiny 2. Yeah. Hopefully Perfect. we'll beat it this time. Yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, you can check us out all over the internet. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Twitter, it's at UP Gamers Podcast. Uh, you can email us at underpaidgamers.com. You can check us out on YouTube, on SoundCloud, iTunes. Email us where? Underpaid Gamers Podcast at gmail.com. Did you say that? I think so, but I don't remember. I heard underpaidgamers.com. Maybe I just blanked when you said at gmail.com. Maybe. Podcast. We have a website, underpaidgamers.com. We've said that. We're on Cam. Twitch. We're all over the place. Just Google us. You'll find us. That's probably not the best way to say that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Well, if you're still listening, we love you. Join our thing. We miss you. Goodbye.